ground, undoubtedly, as also about the gray zone uh, environmental concept. And we require new skills and expertise to deal with multi-domain operation. Thank you so very much. Now, the next speaker that we have, our second speaker is Air Marshal Stuart Evans from the United Kingdom. Uh, he was a senior military advisor to the U.S. Central Command in Florida in 2014. He'll be speaking to us on the concept of war fighting in MDO. He has two questions to also answer. What is the ideology of NATO countries to achieve convergence in MDO? What are the measures taken by Western countries during the competition phase short of war to counter the threats in the domain of cyber, information, and <coughs> electromagnetic spectrum? Over to you, Stuart. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, and thank you for the, uh, the introduction. I apologize for the two rays of light above my head here, um, as it's dark here in the UK, and I can't seem to uh, eliminate them. Um, if I could have my next slide, please, my scope slide. Um, so I think um, echoing many of the comments that have been made by the distinguished speakers so far, I'm going to provide um, a NATO perspective on um, MDO um, covering the following topics. So the first slide, please. Looking at the conceptual foundations, uh, we all know that the term MDO has quickly become part of our military lexicon. But like many of the initiatives, I think, that preceded it, like the air-sea battle or net-centric warfare, it's actually quite hard to discern an authoritative joint conceptual foundation for MDO that goes deeper than the PowerPoint slides or some of the eloquent rhetoric. Despite many texts, speeches and confident views on the topics by a range of senior figures, think tanks and doctrine centres, none of the NATO nations and arguably even the US has a definitive, jointly agreed NDO concept. Perhaps mirroring experience from cyberspace, this conceptual ambiguity results in MDO being um, interpreted in different ways. Where you sit, or perhaps more importantly, the color of the uniform you sit in, determines what you see. It also risks allowing perhaps parochial thinking that focuses on service specific solutions rather than an altruistic, in our sense, NATO, joint, or indeed a whole of government approach to realizing the benefits promised by MDO. In the most extreme cases, this can be driven by the desire for ownership or to encroach on roles traditionally carried out by the other services. Even though the individual services are aggressively pursuing their own MDO ambitions, it's hard to identify any significant shift in defense spending at least outside of the US, to deliver MDO. So how do we define it? And more importantly, how do we develop an overarching conceptual view? So you can go back to the previous slide. A conceptual view of how it will provide us the warfighting edge we seek. General Dempsey, a previous chairman of the US Joint Chiefs of Staff, argued that MDO is what comes after joint. But there's some confusion within NATO over whether MDO represents an ambition to enhance jointness, or whether we first need to enhance jointness to deliver MDO. US adoption of the term Joint All Domain C2, or JADC2, adds further complexity. Most MDO contributors appear to agree that it should be considered as a journey, an overall approach to drive more effective joint integration across all domains, between all levels of warfare, across government, and of course with our allies. Next slide, please. So again, looking at some of the drivers and challenges, uh, we might focus our debate on MDO by look at what's driving it and some of the challenges we face as we try to develop some conceptual principles. So the so-called pacing threat in the evolving strategic environment is generally agreed to involve large scale, high intensity warfare uh, by a near peer competitor who's able to contest in all of the operating domains at high tempo, but in concert with other elements of national power. The challenge is that our technological edge continues to be eroded. We're unlikely to have a numerical advantage, and it's increasingly difficult to hide significant military deployments. We also have to consider the activity already described as gray zone or sub threshold or even hybrid conflict, 
terms which, of course, you could argue simply relabel the ages old application of non military tactics to exert influence on another nation. Not all nations agree on the manifestation of this threat, but the alliance is already configuring itself to enable military support to this ongoing and continuous competitive environment. Another challenge that many of us face is that our existing structures and processes remain configured for industrial age warfare. But the information age is already upon us, something our potential opponents have been keen to exploit. Sources suggest that China's vision of victory centers on systems confrontation and systems attack, focusing on comms and information systems and the networks that support them. And clearly concerted effort will be required to manage our own shift towards information age warfare, including in cyberspace and the electromagnetic spectrum or EMS. You should note here that NATO doesn't formally accept the EMS as a domain, although there is recognition that we've taken something of uh, a capability holiday regarding electronic warfare over the last decade. We've also mentioned the increasing trend for capabilities in one domain to be able to deliver effect in the others, including disruptive technologies and longer range weapons that place ever greater demands on the ability to dynamically integrate all available systems, potentially both inside and outside the theater of operations. This expansion of the battle space, including by systems forming part of so-called A2 anti-access um, aerial denial systems, is a significant challenge facing NATO. Battle space expansion is, of course, taken to extremes in cyberspace, where reach can be effectively global, blurring the distinction between forward and rear based activity. And lastly, we need to take an honest appraisal of whether efforts to deliver fully joint operations have been achieved. Um, I suggest we probably still have quite a way to go. This reality indicates that any MDO concept must be based on taking jointery to the next level. But reflecting that joint is normally considered as an operational level activity and that the employment of uh, cyber and space capabilities likely to be managed at the strategic level, most NATO nations agree that the individual services who have traditionally been the owners of the land, sea and air, the traditional domains, will probably continue to be best placed to deliver war fighting outputs at the tactical level. Next slide, please. So having looked at some of the drivers, let's consider some of the generally accepted principles or in some uh, cases tenets of MDO delivery. And I'll suggest um, four for you, but there are there have uh, been others proposed. The first is the need for a jointly agreed view. Um, if we're going to resolve some of those challenges we talked about in the strategic environment, we're probably going to require radical and uncomfortable solutions involving acceptance of risk and failure. Moving forward in areas such as experimentation, exercises and training to stimulate innovation must be part of a joint innovative process rather than placing hope in delivering MDO in one seismic leap forward. Most NATO nations continue to admire the challenges, but the US Army and the USAF are forming ahead with JADC2 experimentation, although notably the US Navy apparently sees MDO as something that it does day to day. There has been some inter-service effort in the US on these and other strands, but convergence of the separate conceptual approaches is actually a later part of overall plans. And one only hopes that they will actually plug and play successfully at the end. Most conceptual thinking, however, recognizes that domain and capability, in capability integration has to be one of the foundations of any MDO approach. Depictions of an integrated networked battle space are impressive, but there are relatively few concrete examples that describe how MDO will actually deliver the war fighting superiority we ask. MDO is arguably more than simply responding to a hostile event in one domain with an effect in another. Similarly, um, even making traditional areas such as airland integration more efficient might not actually answer the question. It should perhaps instead seek to offer the ability to use an increasing range of responses from, through, and within different domains, including the newer ones described previously, to allow us to expand the range of options available to commanders 
and keep any adversary guessing about how we might react. In addition to integration, a lot of the MDO debate has focused on what has been termed decision superiority, or in some nations, information advantage. This is nothing new. It's one of the reasons why we went from taking the high ground to the balloon, to the aircraft, and then into space. But for MDO, decision superiority aims to identify and exploit what could be increasingly fleeting windows of superiority or overmatch in one domain to allow delivery of effect in another. This must be aligned with an ability to create more effective synergies across the domains to focus effects at critical locations faster and more effectively than our opponents can identify them and react. For instance, UK thinking in this area discusses an updated version of Boyd's OODA loop operating at a number of different levels around the core themes of sense, understand and orchestrate. And lastly, any MDO approach must look also to shape thinking on how to better, get, better integrate warfighting elements with all other elements of national power, in addition, of course, to interoperability and close integration with key allies. This supports another principle, which raises the notion of multi-domain thinking exercising strategic posture options with elements operating in the different domains configured and arrayed in response to the evolving strategic environment and the influence they can exert on the identified target audience. It could be argued that the Russian A2 AD laydown we mentioned earlier reflects an example of this principle. Next slide, please. So how do we turn or look to turn the concept to delivery? Clearly, US efforts are already examining how to better integrate capabilities across the domains by delivering the JAD C2 or Joint All Domain C2 to employ them. This includes by starting with digital airland integration and how technology, including real time virtual displays, can drive efficiencies in areas like rapid targeting, battle space clearance, and allocation of multi domain fires. But more complex cross domain options may challenge existing processes, particularly in NATO. As an example, if we're looking to deny any adversary access to the space domain, we might seek to um, influence the ground segments that they rely on for access to space. But we could achieve that by delivering effects in the land domain, using electronic attack from the air, or long range fires from the air, maritime, or land domains, or even a cyber attack, or a combination of all of them. So given the operational level focus of joint operations, a key conceptual consideration will be the command and control structures we need to orchestrate such multi-domain campaigns. This will probably require more than simple bolt-on upgrades to our existing structures. Decision-making architectures and the processes must be redesigned around an increasing range of technical capabilities to manage an ever more complex battle space. Advanced digital technologies such as AI, synthetic environments and virtual displays could even allow many HQ functions or entities to be distributed or dispersed if they can be linked by secure and robust network architectures. NATO's concerns over the vulnerability of its large static HQ structures has driven uh, thinking about a federated approach. An Allied Command Transformation in Norfolk, Virginia is conducting a study into future headquarters requirements, but progress has been somewhat slow. Even with such dig digital augmentation, operational warfighting will continue to require human input. This probably requires further study into the socio-technology balance within our decision-making structures. MDO are likely to demand warfighting joint commanders and staffs with the knowledge and skills to understand employment of capability and across multiple domains. And commanders in the individual domains will probably also need an instinctive ability to move her across the seams to other domains and into other domains. As part of its work into MDO, the USAF has introduced a JADC2 personnel specialization, highlighting the need to think now about how to recruit and train the digital generation required for warfighting in the information age. Most NATO nations, however, have yet to move forward on these initiatives. And last slide, please. 
So in summary, if delivery of an MDO approach to war fighting is to be a fundamental pillar for national strategic options and posturing, it must move from utopian expectation into a realistic roadmap for delivery. I'd argue that conceptual convergence is the first essential step in developing a joint approach to MDA, leveraging a wide body of innovative thinking to provide more than resolution of legacy joint ambitions. Reflecting the advent of the information age, this should seek to deliver the decision superiority required to create and exploit fleeting opportunities across the multiple domains, including cyberspace and the electromagnetic spectrum. It will also serve to cohere a national approach to the investment needed, including but by no means limited to command and control, digital technologies, information networks, and personnel able to deliver what are called beyond joint operations. And in terms of capability convergence and integration, this isn't just a military problem. All national departments must be part of a collective whole of government approach to MDO, which itself will be a contribution to the effective employment of all aspects of national power to counter malign or coercive behavior by potential adversaries. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak and I'll take any questions later. I'd like to thank you for a very stimulating and informative talk by you. Uh, in fact, you have actually given out a large number of issues pertaining to the NATO. Your joint opening statement was that you do not have a jointly agreed MDO policy, as you said. And of course, you also gave out the conceptual dilemmas that you face on the overarching concept of MDO and the drivers and challenges uh, that the NATO forces face at the moment in terms of information age warfare as also the industrial age organization structures that you also see amongst yourselves. Uh, I would say that uh, the key principles given by you actually make a great amount of sense to all of us, particularly when you said joint process is a necessity. And that's uh, so very important aspect. And uh, the dilemmas that you face in your conceptual uh, concept of delivery, uh, whether it's about the uh, dilemmas pertaining to multi-domain options, as you mentioned, as also that human element interface would continue to remain uh, superior in the times to come. Thank you so very much. I'm sh would you be holding on for the interactive session? Thank you so very much. Just about